At a time when Europeans were obsessed with Egyptian mummies, driven first by the belief that ground-up human remains could cure anything from the bubonic plague to a headache, the bandaged corpses of ancient Egyptians were the subject of fascination from the Middle Ages to the 19th century. Mamiya, the product created from mummified bodies, was a medicinal substance consumed for centuries by rich and poor, available in apothecary shops was created from the remains of mummies brought from Egyptian tombs back to Europe. By the 12th century apothecaries were using ground-up mummies for their otherworldly medicinal properties. Mummies were a prescribed medicine for the next 500 years. A world without antibiotics, physicians prescribed ground-up skulls, bones and flesh to treat illnesses from headaches to reducing swelling or curing the plague. Not everyone was convinced. Guy de la Fontaine, a royal doctor, doubted Mamiya was a useful medicine and saw forged mummies made from dead peasants in Alexandria in 1564. He realized people could be conned. They were not always consuming genuine ancient mummies. But the forgeries illustrate an important point, which was constant demand for dead flesh to be used in medicine and the supply of real Egyptian mummies could not be met. Apothecaries and herbalists were still dispensing mummy medicines into the 18th century. Some doctors believed that fresh meat and blood had a vitality the long dead lacked. The claim that fresh was best convinced even the noblest of nobles. England's King Charles II took medication made from human skulls after suffering a seizure, and, until 1909, physicians commonly used human skulls to treat neurological conditions. For the royal and social elite, eating mummies seemed a royally appropriate medicine, as doctors claimed Mamiya was made from pharaohs. Royalty ate royalty. By the 19th century, people were no longer consuming mummies to cure illness but Victorians were hosting unwrapping parties where Egyptian corpses would be unwrapped for entertainment at private parties. Please before we continue don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you get notified on our next upload. Don't forget to comment your thoughts too. By the 19th century, people were no longer consuming mummies to cure illness but Victorians were hosting unwrapping parties where Egyptian corpses would be unwrapped for entertainment at private parties. During much of the 18th and 19th century, Europeans were fascinated by Egypt, the afterlife, and everything involving mummies. The obsession was so strong and so prevalent, it even has a name, Egyptomania. This fascination actually dated back to the 15th century, when merchants started trafficking mummies into Europe for bizarre and often macabre reasons, such as in the case of Mamiya, medicine made using ground-up mummies, and even the creation of a paint color known as mummy brown. By the 19th century, however, the demand for mummies was at an all-time high, partly because Napoleon's campaign in Egypt and Syria had renewed interest in ancient civilizations. Not in a purely academic way, of course, but more in a let's get together and unwrap some mummies kind of way. Unwrapping parties were exactly what they sound like. Victorians would get together, have some food and drinks, and then proceed to unwrap a mummy. As bizarre as this sounds, it was English surgeon Thomas Pettigrew who sort of pioneered this bizarre form of entertainment although to be fair, there are some reports of mummy unwrapping events that date to much earlier times, but they certainly were not as popular or commonplace. Pettigrew was a remarkable scientist who had vaccinated Queen Victoria, was a renowned antiquarian, and would eventually write some of the most in-depth books of the time about mummies and ancient medicine. But he will always be remembered primarily as the guy who made mummy unwrapping parties popular. Not that it started that way. Pettigrew's first unwrapping took place in front of a group of physicians in 1821, somewhat scientifically excusable, but by the 1930s, he was unwrapping mummies in front of spectators that were more interested in the shock value than the scientific value of it. Eventually, he made the party smaller and more private, and other well-to-do members of Victorian society started to imitate him. The unwrapping itself often started with an introduction or lecture, followed by the unrolling of the many layers of bandages and removal of objects and amulets found during the process until the body was revealed. Depending on who was doing the unwrapping, an examination or discussion would follow about everything from the state of the skin to whether there was still hair present. If you would like to support the channel please check out our Patreon. You would also enjoy exclusive benefits like customized merches, artifacts, shoutouts, and a whole lot more. Click link in the description to join the family by subscribing to a membership. Soon, even the pretense of medical research was lost. By now mummies were no longer medicinal but thrilling. A dinner host who could entertain an audience while unwrapping was rich enough to own an actual mummy. The thrill of seeing dried flesh and bones appearing as bandages came off meant people flocked to these unwrappings, whether in a private home or the theater of a learned society. The mummy's curse. Mummy unwrapping parties ended as the 20th century began. The macabre thrill seemed in bad taste and the inevitable destruction of archaeological remains seemed regrettable. The sudden death in 1923 of Lord Carnarvon, sponsor of the Tutankhamun expedition, was from natural causes but soon attributed to a new superstition. The mummy's curse. In 2016 Egyptologist John J. Johnston hosted the first public unwrapping of a mummy since 1908. Part art, part science, and part show, Johnston created a an immersive recreation of what it was like to be present at a Victorian unwrapping. It was as tasteless as possible, with everything from the bangles walk like an Egyptian playing on loudspeaker, to the plying of attendees with straight gin. The mummy was only an actor wrapped in bandages but the event was a heady sensory mix. The fact it took place at St. Bart's Hospital in London was a modern reminder that mummies cross many realms of experience from the medical to the macabre. 
Today, the black market of antiquity smuggling including mummies is worth about 3 billion US dollars. No serious archaeologist would unwrap a mummy and no physician suggest eating one. But the lure of the mummy remains strong. They are still for sale, still exploited, and still a commodity. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more interesting videos on history. And don't forget to check out our channel for many other interesting videos. Leave a comment to share your thoughts.